How is it going, Bears fans? Welcome back to another episode of Bear Down Uncut, the show where we talk everything Bears every day of the week. Happy New Year, happy playoffs, and happy Black Monday. As a lot of people have been predicting for a while, the Bears have finally let go of Matt Nagy as well as Ryan Pace. We haven't been around for a while, but today we are back to break down this news and kick off our off-season coverage. So let's just hop right into it, guys. Uh, we haven't been around for a while, I can't lie. We, we've we been pretty busy uh, throughout the holiday season. Haven't recorded a video for three-some weeks here. Uh, but the off-season is really our bread and butter where we uh, really achieve, in my opinion. It's where we can record basically endless amounts of videos. So uh, especially with these coaching changes and the GM opening, I'm motivated. I know Parth and Jalen are motivated. Uh, so we're going to get back to bringing you guys consistent content each and every day of the week in 2022. So welcome back. If you haven't seen us in a while, I am your host, Chris Malpe, today to break down this news, uh, a bombshell out of Chicago that people saw coming for a while. I am joined with both of my co-hosts, Parsh Shaw and Jalen McClinton. It feels really good to be back, guys. First and foremost, uh, how are you doing? It's been a minute. I'm doing hey, good. Uh, minute, yeah, it's man. been a while. <laughs> it's yeah, been a yeah. minute. Um, uh, I just I just had my first day of like classes back, so been tired from that. It's so cold outside. Just walking outside in the cold sucks. Getting to class and stuff. Um, but yeah, no holidays were great. Um, it's good to be back recording. I feel like, like Chris said, we're really good at our off season coverage. I feel like we can push videos out every every single day. Basically, there's just a lot more topics to record about and. It's a lot more engaging, I feel like, for us to also put our input in. So uh, definitely excited to get this offseason coverage started and watch some playoff football. Yeah, Jalen, yeah. you, uh, you've you been, you been busy. I mean, even during the season, you weren't recording with us every so often. But, you know, you talk about how you've gone through a big transformation, losing a bunch of weight and stuff. How, how have you been the last couple of months? Well, when it comes to sports, I mean, other than the Bulls, it's been it's been bad. Like you know, watching the Bears, <laughs> watching the Bears has been it's been hard this year. But uh, you know, I got accepted into college and stuff like that, so I'll be going to school soon. I like said I lost a, I lost a bunch of weight and stuff like that. You know, getting my body. I want I wanted to get healthy. Um, you know, so other than that, like it's been fun. I'm definitely you know excited to get back to recording, doing doing what I'm doing what I love. Um, I. Just took a break off so I could, you know, like I said, get ready for school and focus on that. And now that that's over, it, you know, it's back to recording. You know, uh, like you said, this is the off season. This is where we've been, you know, getting our most subscribers and probably the most, you know, fun I've had it recording was during the off season and stuff like that. So, uh, other than that, it's great. It's great to be back. Uh, start some dance football. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, you know, and I've talked to you guys about this behind the scenes too. Uh, we weren't as good as we could be in 2021, and especially with how this new year started. Uh, I think we're motivated to get back to our roots in 2022 and start pushing things out each and every day, regardless of the uh, way the team is moving. So I'm really looking forward to uh, the content that we're going to start pushing out here in the next couple of weeks. We get back into our free agency and draft mode, uh, and everything starts kicking back into gear. But we must start right here with Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace. This morning, ESPN's Adam Schefter reported quite early in the morning, uh, basically at the crack of dawn, that Matt Nagy had been fired by the Bears. We'll get into Ryan Pace a little bit later. That news uh, obviously broke a little bit later on in the day. But Matt Nagy, something that we all saw coming, he is out of Chicago after four seasons. Parth, I'm going to toss it over to you. What are your thoughts on this move that was very highly anticipated by all Bears fans? Yeah, uh, I mean, we all were hoping that this happened today, uh, and it it finally happened. Um, you know, the Bears had to make this move. It was the right decision. At the end of the day, uh, Matt Nagy wasn't able to get the best out of his players, especially on the offensive side of the ball, uh, which he was supposed to be this, you know, uh, quarterback guru who was supposed to, you know, help Mitchell Trubisky back in 2018, which, which was a pretty solid season. I'll give him that. But again, Vic Fangio's defense was a big part of that season. And then in 2019, uh, when the defense struggled, the, the offense was never able to get it going. Uh, we all pointed fingers towards Trubisky. And now here we are a couple years later, and we see that the offensive struggles are still occurring, and it's the same problems, and they're honestly getting worse. Uh, this year, I mean, look at week 17. The Bears went for it on fourth and one and decided to pass the ball three out of the four times. 
got sacked twice and the other one was a pick six. Uh, just things like small things like these that Matt Nagy could have fixed um, just weren't fixed. Guys weren't developing uh, when they came to Chicago on the offensive side of the ball. They got worse. Uh, if you look at the only player that really has stood out to me uh, in the last couple of seasons has been Montgomery and uh, Mooney, uh, the two guys who've actually excelled since they've come to Chicago. Um, other than those two guys, a lot of players have regressed. You know, I, don't, I feel like we haven't gotten the best out of Cole Komet, who has a lot of untapped potential. Uh, same with uh, Robinson this year. I feel like we messed him up a don't lot. Even, don't even get me started on that. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's just a lot of things um, that Matt Nagy has done wrong. At the end of the day, he was a good person and a great leader, um, but those two things don't cut it when you got to win games, and uh, at the end of the day, he wasn't able to do that this year. So uh, definitely saw this move coming, just like other Bears fans. I'm ecstatic. Um, I'm, it's going to be a long, long off season for sure, uh, and a very important off season because we have two hi two hirings to make, to to fulfill, and uh, especially this Bears team is looking to contend next year with a division that looks wide open right now. Yeah. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen up there in Green Bay. Uh, we'll get uh, we'll get to it before we close out the episode. But Ted Phillips' role in Chicago definitely has been modified a little, so there's going to be a lot on the plate of the new Bears GM. Uh, but obviously, I mean, we saw this coming. We, you know, when we were making videos more consistently during the season weeks back, we were saying that Nagy was a dead man walking. So the Bears, mm -hmm. third and four and thirty-one under Nagy in the regular season, zero and two in the playoffs. The Bears since two thousand and seven when they entered. The Super Bowl are one and three in the playoffs. The Bears finished this year with a six and eleven record. It's unfortunate for Nagy because after that 2018 season, we really thought that he was going to be the one that we were looking for. The Bears were 12 and four. They reached the playoffs. They won the NFC North. Nagy was named Coach of the Year, uh, and he earned praise that season for his offensive success. Uh, but unfortunately, the Bears have been regressing ever since. So this is a move that I completely saw coming, and I'm sure we could sit here talking about it. Uh, for years and years and years, but the Bears are now going to look to hopefully bring in an offensive mind. The future should be centered around Justin Fields, who's entering his sophomore season after having some struggles in his rookie season. There's no sugarcoating that at this point. But Jalen, I'm going to pass it along to you. Uh, you've had your thoughts about Nagy and Pace for a while now, but it seems like at some point this season, it finally reached a breaking point with both of them. More specifically, Nagy, we'll get on to pace next. Yeah. But what were your thoughts about this move that broke this morning? Like you said, like it was all it was expected, but um, you know, we, we couldn't believe it until we until we seen that tweet that he's officially been fired. So uh, you know, it's crazy to think about. Like I, I remember when we hired Nagy, I was I was in class. I showed my teacher who who on I on our ground like we was an Eagles fan. And he was laughing because he was like, you know, you're gonna regret this in four years, and he was right. Actually, it was like three years that we regretted it, but um. I was happy, you know, obviously we went 12 and four, he won coach of the year. Um, I felt like we were a Super Bowl contender team if it wasn't for, you know, a certain play that must not be named. Um, you know, one of the best seasons I've had as a Bears fan in my young life. And then, it, like you said, it all went downhill after that player started to regress. We seen Mitchell um, not look like the 2018 self. The offense started to get worse and worse. You know, we thought it was going to get better. Um, you know, the defense was still good, but it couldn't carry a, a, a abysmal offense. You know, the whole season, and we've seen that multiple times, even, you know, to this point where defense started off really really strong, but the offense was, you know, still not able to move the ball or score in the red zone when, mm -hmm. when they needed to. So uh, it's been a rough couple of years. You know, I'm, I'm glad it's over. You know, we have a, a young quarterback to look, for, look, look forward to in Justin. You know, I just hope we don't do the same thing we did with Mitch and put him in a position where, you know, the, their, the, the coach or offensive coordinator doesn't trust him enough. You know, to throw the ball downfield, and I think that's that's the only thing that matters. Like like Parv said, I don't think he put a lot of our players that we drafted into good good position to succeed. Like the only person that like really still you know played good, even through that, he was was David, who even he had a, a down season that he did last year, mainly because of injuries. But uh, Darnell got better. Um, I I still think that Cole Komet could be a better player. Um, he, he had more yards this year because he had more opportunity uh, being the number one tight end. He had over 600 yards, but didn't have any touchdowns, which is crazy to me because he's a 6'4", 6'5", you know, tight end, and we're trusting Jimmy Graham in the red zone. But, so um, I feel like it's a, it's a lot of untapped um, potential and a lot of offensive guys on this roster, and I'm, I'm excited to see what um, – I'm not excited, but I'm, I'm looking forward to see what George McCaskey and, you know, all the guys he's looking forward to, to see what type of general manager and, and you know, head coach they bring in for the 2022 season. 
And that's really the tale of the tape, Jalen. You hit it on the head when it comes to Matt Nagy in terms of untapped potential. We saw it with Mitchell Trubisky, which might tie more back into Ryan Pace. Um, but we saw it with Trubisky. We saw it with Fields this year and the whole debate of uh, reports coming out that McCaskey had to be the one to tell Nagy, hey, you have to start Justin Fields. Uh, so Matt Nagy seems like, uh, you know, unfortunately, he's a, you know, Parse said it earlier, he's a great guy, a great leader. Uh, I think he's someone that the team rallied around for years, even up until the day he was fired. Uh, but that's not going to cut it. The NFL's a business. The Bears have to get better. Uh, and their deep in their offense, the last three years, I believe, ranked 23rd, uh, 27th, and now this year, like 30th in the league in total offense. So he was the offensive guru. Things had to change, uh, and Chicago shook it up like they had to shake it up uh, for the most part. Let's move on to Ryan Pace. This is a little bit more of an interesting one, and if we were recording videos the last couple of weeks, it's definitely a topic I would have brought up. Uh, the rumors started swirling uh, about Pace the last couple of weeks. There were some rumors that he might be uh, promoted, like Brad Stevens of the Boston Celtics, for example, to a higher role. Uh, that takes a little bit of responsibilities in some areas away from him. Some people thought he was going to be the head of scouting for the Bears, and uh, he was possibly going to be reassigned in some sense. But Adam Schefter, just about uh, 30 minutes to an hour after breaking the nagging news, ended up sharing this news about Ryan Pace being fired. Pace has been around for a while, and I, I have to give Pace a little bit of gratitude because I do think he's leaving the Bears in a better situation than Phil Emery was when Pace came in back in 2015. But six or seven years here for Ryan Pace in Chicago, we all remember him drafting the likes of Kevin White and stuff. He has been around for quite some time, so this is a polarizing move, getting rid of him, one that's definitely a little bit more controversial amongst the fan base. Parth, I'm going to start with you. This is a move that some people saw coming. Some people didn't know whether or not it was really going to happen or if he was going to get moved around within the organization. But what were your thoughts when you saw this news this morning that Ryan Pace has also been relieved of his duties? It was the right move, um, but it definitely hurts. Um, as a fan, I loved Ryan Pace. I felt like he tried his best to put the team into positions to win games as much as they can. Um, if you look at the roster, he was given... I think in 2014 or 2015 when he first came into Chicago, uh, it was a terrible roster. And the way he's, you know, figured it out, um, brought a great defense in for like a couple seasons, you know, in 2018, we all saw that Bears defense flash. And a lot of credit goes to Ryan Pace for building that defense. Uh, again, on the offensive side of the ball, he struggled at finding guys. Um, you know, he drafted Mitchell Trubisky, who turned out to be a, a bust, I guess. Um, then Kevin White, uh, someone who struggled. Adam Shaheen, someone who struggled. Uh, the list goes on, um, but uh, it was definitely the right move. At the end of the day, the Bears need to find someone who can bring in weapons on both sides of the ball and also use the cap space effectively. Um, Ryan Pace is someone who overpaid at times yeah. uh, just to you know, be able to produce and be able to contend uh, even though we're not going to make the playoffs. And that was, it's not the right move at times. And uh, also, the cornerback situation, how he dealt with that uh, coming to this year, knowing that we have, uh, you know, a very thin, thin cornerback, and he basically didn't pay much attention to it in the draft uh, and waited till the sixth round to draft Thomas Grant. Uh, things like that are unacceptable, uh, especially when we have a cornerback hole, which is one of the toughest, toughest positions to play in football. Um, so you can't, you just can't forget about those things. And again, you got to look at the records. And he just did not win enough games. And that's the most important thing in the NFL. You just got to win games. And it just came down to that, I guess. You know, it was going to be tough to keep pace around from the start. He's already been around for two exactly. head coaching hires. And while I think that the McCaskies would have obviously very much so favored keeping him over Nagy, at some point it just didn't make sense for them to mm -hmm. do so. Pace was around for the John Fox era. Obviously, we know who that, how that went. Uh, and then this Nagy era where things got really good really quickly and then came tumbling on down. So uh, when I take a look back on Ryan Pace's tenure for, uh, with the Bears, uh, I think he was a much better GM uh, than Phil Emery, uh, taking a look at recent Bears history. Uh, but what, what I think it comes down to, and Parth, you touched on it a little bit, is uh, complete and utter mismanagement of the salary cap. I really like Ryan Pace as a drafter. I think he's great at evaluating talent and finding uh, good players in the, right, in the late rounds. Eddie Jackson, uh, Tariq Cohen, Thomas Graham, hopefully someone that pans out in Daz Newsome. 
uh, and there are nameless others that I could bring up that Ryan Pace has been able to produce uh, cornerstone players really on this Bears team. But the mismanagement of the salary cap uh, is atrocious. Uh, I believe the last couple of seasons, the Bears are the only team uh, committing over 65% of their salary cap to the defense. And I believe they're the only team uh, putting more than 50% of their salary cap towards their defense. So ridiculous numbers that went through this defense. Obviously, it's been a unit that's performed a lot throughout the years. Uh, but it goes back to what we were saying with Nagy with uh, the underperformance of the offense. So should be interesting to see who comes in and ends up taking his spot. You know, uh, I think it's going to be really interesting considering that person's going to be the head of football ops. The Bears have already put in an inter- or a request to the Indianapolis Colts uh, for their director of college scouting, Morocco Brown. Uh, someone who spent six years in Chicago a couple of years back when the Bears were around uh, their Super Bowl era. So we'll obviously get to talking to that in future videos. But Jalen, I want to pass it to you. It seems like you've been a little bit fonder on pace throughout the years. Uh, and a lot of Bears fans have, you know, it was really split down the middle uh, on what some fans thought uh, about him getting fired. But at the end of the day, it seemed like it didn't make sense to keep him around. Uh, and unfortunately, He's done a good job at some role in his role in some aspects uh, and not so great in others. What were your thoughts on the Bears letting go of Ryan Pace as well as Matt Nagy? Uh, I was I was definitely more shocked, you know, when they fired him than I was with Nagy. Like, I think Nagy, we all knew it was coming because it was one talked about of, of, of stuff like that. But uh, when, when, when there was enough Pace got fired, especially after Peter Schroeder, he was like, uh, Ryan Pace is expected to say and, and be, and, uh, be involved in finding another head coach. And I tweeted this on Twitter. I'm like, you know, uh, I said something. I'm like, Dan, this is like he gets a third chance, you know. Not, I'm a little surprised, but, you know, I'm, I'm you know, not that, you know, upset with it. Because, like you said, I was a, was a big fan of Ryan Pace. I know he had his mess-ups at quarterback with giving Mike Glennon, you know, millions of dollars, you know, uh, dra- the misdrafting on Trubisky. Even, you know, trading for Nick Foles and bringing in Andy Dolan, who was his, you know, plan A to, to be our starter for the rest of the year. Uh, you know, which which show that yeah, that was those those are all bad you know uh, mistakes. You can't you can't do that when it comes to the quarterback position, which is one of the most important positions um, in the game of football. But mm-hmm. uh, like you said, I was a big fan of his drafting, especially for the for the last couple of seasons, uh, 20, mainly 20, uh, 20 and uh, 2021, uh, and him him being able to find gems in the late rounds. You know, Darnell Mooney, uh, you know, he found David in the in the, in the third, Tariq and Eddie in the same draft in the fourth round. Uh, even guys in undrafted free agency like Bryce Callahan, you know, Cameron Meredith, and you know, stuff like that. So I definitely, I definitely was a fan of his, of his, um, you know, scouting. But when when it comes to, you know, like you said, you know, being able to keep up with cap and and you know, still he had a couple busts, uh, especially on the offensive side of the ball. You know, like Park mentioned, Mitch, Mitch and uh, Kevin White, um, Adam Shaheen, even a guy like Anthony Miller who he drafted in the second yeah. round. Um, so. Uh, I'm like I said I was I was kind of uh, shocked by it, but um, I'm not surprised because like you said a third head coach um, a- after failing with with two um, and plus not having the wins, um, it, it's not it's not something that uh that that's been really accepted around this league. It's a business at the end of the day. You know, you know even you could be an, a, a nice guy or a good person, but where you're not you know winning games especially uh and. In a big, a big football town like Chicago, uh, it's not going to go well. So, uh, you know, like I said, you know, sad, to, sad to see him go, but it's just the business side of football. Yeah, uh, and taking a look at pace, I think a lot of people do and don't appreciate this. Something else that I forgot to mention uh, was his his aggressiveness is something that definitely uh, stood out to me throughout the years. He traded up multiple times and gave up first round picks in the trade for Mitchell Trubisky. He gave up two in the trade for Khalil Mack. Uh, he gave up one in the trade for Justin Fields. So while I still think he's leaving the next GM in a better spot than someone like Phil Emery left him in, uh, the Bears are still hampered when it comes to draft capital. They still have a lot of hefty contracts on the table. And whoever's coming in here next year is going to have a lot of important decisions to make in terms of the salary cap, especially when it comes to guys like Eddie Goldman, who underperformed this year and can save them a lot of money uh, if they decide to cut him. So the Bears will look for a new GM and now we stroll into Ted Phillips because this is most definitely an interesting one. A lot of people in Chicago calling for Phillips to get fired, talking about how he's not a football guy. He's in there to make the Bears money. He's more of a marketing business and sales guy. 
So he didn't get fired. It seems like he's going to spend year 24 in Chicago. There are still a lot of rumblings about Phillips' retirement coming up here in the next couple of years. But for over 23 years, Phillips has remained as the Bears' team president and CEO uh, at Hallis Hall. Uh, and there's been a little bit of a modification today. So George McCaskey in his press conference earlier said that the new Bears general manager will report directly to him, not to Ted Phillips. George McCaskey also, alongside Hall of Fame executive Bill Polian, will be making the decision uh, for who the new GM is. But the new GM will be the team president of football operations. Phillips is moved into a role that has more to do uh, with the expansion to Arlington Heights and things like that. Uh, so basically it was McCaskey saying to Phillips the way I took it as uh, you make me a lot of money, but we realize that you are subpar at your job. So even though Phillips wasn't fired, it does seem like this was a move that needed to be made in Chicago. So Jalen, I'm going to toss it to you first. We don't have to talk about this for a long time, but do you think this was the right move uh, taking some power, especially in the football operations department away from Ted Phillips? I definitely feel like it's the right move, but um, when when McCaskey was like he's gonna be, you know, involved in finding a new GM, I think that that wasn't. But hey, who who knows at this point? Uh, but I definitely feel like it was the right move, you know, taking him out that position. But uh, I just need feel like he needs to retire. They say he's gonna retire in the next in the next uh, season or so, but um, you know, I think I think it's time for him to go. Like he, the, the <laughs> last couple of GMs that he's found Phil Emery. I can see even though I was a big fan of Ryan Pace. Uh, then contribute to playoff wins. Um, only two playoff seasons in the seven years he was here. So um, I'm, I'm just ready for him to go. I'm pretty sure a lot of people in Chicago can say that. You know, when they seen me fire Ryan Pace, it was like Ted Phillips too. And, you know, obviously, you know, he's lost he's lost power, but he's still here. And uh, I think that's a problem, but it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're Bears fans, and we'll take what we can get. And if I'm being completely honest, that I'm sure we'll make a video in the next couple of days about the entire George McCaskey press conference that was a complete mess in and of itself he called Owen Kruitz a liar and uh did a lot of questionable things he said uh, like the coach doesn't have to like Justin like for what yeah but um <laughs> yeah you know uh I do think one of the right things that McCaskey did today and something that is being overlooked is taking Ted Phillips uh away from that football role look at the end of the day Ted Phillips is not a football guy uh, I believe he was uh, a very high up in Bears ticketing sales and has a really good business background, uh, but was never a football guy at the end of the day. So giving the power to whoever's the next GM is going to be important. People have their own opinions on the whole Bill Polian situation because of some of his decisions in the past in Indianapolis. But uh, I definitely trust Bill Polian, someone that comes from a football background more than I do Ted Phillips at the end of the day. So Parth, before we close out this episode, it seems like Ted Phillips – is going to more so be focused on these next couple of months. Um, you know, obviously, that expansion out to Arlington Heights that was yeah. finally talked about today for the first time in a while. Uh, I really hope it's not FedEx Field 2.0. I hope you get that reference after a couple railings came down there a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it seems like that's something that Phillips would put together, but the Bears have big plans <laughs> in Arlington Heights. But Parth, do you think this move to take him away from football operations and give more power into the hands of the people that know what they're doing made sense for the Bears. Absolutely. Uh, you know, a lot of Bears fans wanted Phillips fired. Uh, it was just not going to happen just because of how good he is with the business side of football. And the Bears are making that big move to Arlington. And he was a big part of that decision, if not the biggest part of that decision. And he knows the money aspect and the finance aspect. So he was obviously not going to get fired, uh, but obviously taking the football role out of his hands was the right move. He's someone who has no understanding of football, uh, not much interest is what we've heard. So it made no sense for him to even have any aspect of control of like the football side. Yeah, uh, and I think the Bears basically did everything that they needed to do today. Obviously, uh, it does seem like things are up in the air when uh, – it comes to guys like Sean Desai and Bill Lazor. I assume probably house will be cleared and we'll talk about it in the coming days. I think it would only make sense to keep around Desai, but the bears will be a very intriguing option uh, for potential new GMs for potential new head coaching prospects. They've got uh, a rookie quarterback that uh, if it doesn't work out, won't be pinned on anyone who's new and brought in because he was drafted by an old regime. They, I believe, are top 10 in salary cap this upcoming year. So there's a lot to look forward to in Chicago, and we're going to keep covering it for you guys 
each and every day. Uh, we're back. It feels good. A little bit rusty, uh, but Jalen as Parth leaves. It does feel good to be back. So thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of Uncut. If you want more content from us, we're getting our website fired up again in 2022. That's one of our goals that comes with being more consistent here on the podcast. So the link to our website is down in the description, bareddown.com. If you'd like to find the podcast on Instagram and Twitter, you can find it on both platforms at Bear Down. Uh, it's a great way to interact with us and see what we've got going on. We want to start bringing on new guests here in the new year. And finally, you can find the links to our personal social media pages down in the description for myself, Jalen, as well as Parth, uh, our Instagram and Twitter pages. It's another way to interact with us. And you can see our thoughts on all things Bears this entire offseason, as well as the NFL playoffs and the entirety of Chicago sports. Jalen McClinton, Parth stepped aside there for a second, but uh, I can't even express how good it feels to be talking once again and be reinvigorated to start doing this again. Any last words before we sign off here? I wish AK could like be both. Like you know, that would be <laughs> that would be amazing. We could follow the Bulls' uh, footprint, who are nine and one in the last ten games. Man, it's been a lot of fun watching them uh, with how depressing the Bears have been from time to time. But oh man, that would be a lot of fun. Uh, I hope the Bears can nail these next couple of hires. I think George McCaskey's uh, taking it on himself and realizing that uh, he's got to knock this one down. Uh, Bears fans have high expectations. We've talked about it all year. High expectations for Justin Fields. High expectations for their head coach. High expectations for their monsters of the midway defensive unit. So there are a lot of high expectations in Chicago and a lot of change to continue to come. We're going to be covering it for you guys all offseason. Feels so good to be back. It's been a pleasure to be your host. Once again, my name is Chris Maltby. And Bears fans, as always, do us a favor and stay safe and bear down. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.